They say that in racing, rain is the great equalizer. In terms of a series like Formula One, this is certainly true as rain can produce anomalies such as the 2019 German Grand Prix, the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix, and the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix, just to name a few. But if the rain is torrential enough, in sports car racing, a race can be completely thrown on its head to the point where the multi-class system goes completely out the window. This is the story of Petit Le Mans 2015. The championship was tight going into the final round of what was then the Tudor United Sports Car Championship, particularly in the prototype and GTLM classes. In the prototype class, just six points separated the number 90 Visit Florida Corvette and the number 31 Whelan Corvette. In GTLM, Patrick Pile in the number 911 Porsche had the opportunity to be the sole GTLM champion, as he was the only driver on that lineup who had participated in every race that season. He was just three points ahead of the number 25 BMW crew, and the top six all had a mathematical chance to win the championship. The final race of the season would be at Road Atlanta for the annual 10-hour race known as Petit Le Mans. 2015 would be the 18th running of the brainchild of Don Panos, who has been credited numerous times with saving modern sports car racing, and Petit Le Mans played a massive role in doing so. But that's a story for another time. Before the race, the heavens opened, and when the green flag flew, we saw just how treacherous it was, and cars began dropping out of the race like flies in the tricky conditions. The soaking conditions produced a phenomenon that is rarely seen in sports car racing, although this had happened before. For those of you who aren't aware, many sports car racing championships such as the WEC and the Tudor United Sports Car Championship, now known as the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, adopt a multi-class system. In short, the field is generally split into prototype and GT cars, although the specifics of this vary from series to series. Prototypes are usually much faster than the road-based GT cars and compete for the overall win as well as the prototype class win. GT cars will only compete for the GT class win. Sure, Sure, they do compete for an overall position, but that's not really relevant. Effectively, there are two or more races happening on the one track at the one time, depending on the number of classes. For example, you are unlikely to see a GTE car win overall at Le Mans. So when people say Ford won Le Mans in 2016 with the GT, what they really mean is Ford won their class in 2016. However, in very rare circumstances, an endurance race can go so awry that the class system doesn't matter anymore, and it just becomes any man's game. For example, the 1965 24 Hours of Le Mans, when almost every single one of the faster prototypes ran into problems of some kind, and the North American racing team Ferrari 250LM of Maston Gregory, Jochen Rindt, and Ed Hugus won outright. In case you hadn't picked up on it by now, this was one of those races. The downforce dependent prototypes were struggling in the wet conditions and couldn't get any traction coming out of corners. The GT cars, on the other hand, had better low end traction and were overall more planted. On a dry track, the prototypes would have run away from the slower GT cars, but the grip that these cars had in the wet was astounding. The number 911 Porsche in the hands of Patrick Pile, Nick Tandy and Richard Leitz was proving to be the most competitive car in the field, lapping a tenth quicker than the leading prototypes. In the closing stages of the race, the number 911 Porsche managed to get by the number 31 Corvette for the overall lead. Shortly afterwards, a full course caution was thrown after the number 11 RSR Racing and Prototype Challenge crashed out. The number 31 Corvette would make a strategic pit stop, playing the long game, giving the lead to the number 911 Porsche. However, the race did not go back to green, and the checkered flag was flown with still two hours left to run, and the number 911 Porsche would take a historic overall victory, and Patrick Pile would become the sole championship winner in GTLM. The race cost the number 31 car and the Visit Florida Corvette the championship, as the number 5 Action Express racing car would take the lead and win. There has been no race since, other than GT-only rounds, where a GTLM car has won outright in American sports car racing. And that's gonna do it for today's short little history video. I thought this would be a cool one to do with Petit Le Mans 2020 not that far away. Uh, weirdly, I actually wrote this script two years ago, but never got around to making this video until now. 
Anyway, what do you think? Put all your thoughts in the comments below. I do actually read them all, so you may as well say something, and I will most likely respond to you. All the socials are in the description below, including the Tisa, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord server, as well as my own personal Twitter. Please go check those links out if you haven't already done so. Anyway, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.